Good morning, everyone. It is Friday morning, and for our Lent reading this morning, we're going to be reading from John chapter 6, and we're going to read from verse 22 down to verse 59. Let's hear God's word together. The next day, the crowd had stayed on the far shore. The crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that disciples had taken the boat, only the boat, and they realised Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, where did you, how did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understand the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want to perform God's work too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only God, work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. They answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those who the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I will come down from heaven to do I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. This is the will of, of God, that I should not lose even one of those who he has given to me, but I should rise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the father who has sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will be taught by, do by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the Father. Only I, who was sent from God, have seen him. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I will offer so the world may live is my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other about what it meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will never die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. 
Amen. And we ask that God would bless this reading of his word. This is an interesting passage, as I'm sure you will agree, especially as we journey on Lent. Um, a time whenever so many people give up things, food, sweets, chocolate or whatever. Um, and Jesus is talking about bread. Um, but then he's talking about his, his flesh and his blood. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. And lots of people sort of wonder at this passage at times. But of course it's symbolic. Um, the symbolism is eating and drinking means accepting what is going to happen. Accepting the sacrifice that is coming. So you've got to think back to the, the system of sacrifices that the Israelites um, had that was given by God. For sin, they brought sacrifices to, to worship uh, and to give praise to God. They brought sacrifices. That's what Cain and Abel did. Abel's sacrifice was acceptable to God. Cain's was not. Cain came with the wrong attitude, the wrong approach to God which meant that his sacrifice was useless, whereas Abel's was brought with the right attitude, with the right meaning, and it was accepted by God. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice for our sins, but we need to come with the right attitude and accept that sacrifice. By accepting it, it means that we know that we are sinful, that in our own right we cannot be made right with God in our own way, and that we need to accept what Christ has done for us. And that is the symbolism of accepting the sacrifice and eating the flesh and drinking the blood. Because then what we're saying is that Christ's death on the cross and his blood being shed covers us for our sin. That was the whole symbolism that was there. That's why Jesus is called the bread of life. Um, he is the one who gives us eternal life if we accept him, if we eat from him. It's like anything else. You can, you, can, you can set food down in front of somebody. They don't have to eat it. But only if they accept that food and eat it do they get the nourishment from it. And it's the same with Christ. Jesus doesn't force himself on us. God doesn't force himself on us. He's given us free will. We have to choose to believe who he is. We have to choose to accept him and follow him. And if we don't, then we are lost. But if we do then we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. That is amazing. That is wonderful. That is transforming. Through the Gospel of John, we come across different I am's. Today it is, I am the bread of life. Maybe you know that bread. Maybe accept that bread. Maybe eat of that bread so that we can have that eternal life with God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the wonder and the marvel of your words, for the truths that it teaches us. Thank you again for the reminder of what Christ has done for us. Lord, we pray that this world would open their eyes and see Jesus, that they would accept what Christ has done for them, that they would eat of that bread of life, that they would have eternal life with you. Lord, just go with us this day, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in today. It's been great to have you online. Um, this is the last land reading of the week. Um, tomorrow, there's no reading. And on Sunday, then, we're down here in church for 11 o'clock. Um, but, it's, of course, it's not actually here. We're going to be online. So wherever you are, whether you're sitting at home, whether you're out for a walk somewhere, uh, whether you're down the beach, you're maybe up Scrabble Tower, wherever you may be, come 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Or if it's a wee bit later, you can tune in as well. Um, please just tune in and join us. Um, for our Sunday morning worship from wherever you are but how we are united. So in the meantime folks take care and God bless.